welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 138 this episode is with my friend christian piles who is a writer director dp cinematographer literally everything and he's equally good at all of it uh christian and i actually met uh back in january on this project called empty uh and since then we've worked on two other projects and he's just a joy to work with he's also one of the nicest people and it was a it was a long time coming having him on the show, and I was really excited to get to talk to him because when you work with someone, you don't super get to know them. Um, and I was able to do so in this episode. Christian's just fantastic. Uh, we actually talked about how he grew up in the Dominican Republic, and then uh, watching cartoons over there, and how it was different than here because he would watch SpongeBob and Dora the Explorer in the Dominican Republic, but it was in Spanish. And come to find out. Dora teaches people in the Dominican Republic how to speak English, so it's reversed. So he talked about how crazy that was coming to the States and seeing that it was reversed. And he's like, oh, this is different. And SpongeBob and Patrick, Patrick is named Patricio. That was kind of neat. I didn't know that. Uh, so we actually, uh, we talked about that. We talked about how he moved from the Dominican Republic to the States, and he only had a suitcase full of clothes and $100 to his name. And then he went on to start his own video production company. We talk about that, what that's like, the different projects he's worked on. Uh, We talk about him recently doing puppy yoga, which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, And then we just kind of went down the list of different things that we've worked on. Uh, We talk about a project called Empty, which we worked on together. uh, That was actually at a gas station, uh, which was pretty cool. Pretty cool learning experience. Uh, We talk about uh, Blisters, which is a short film that we both worked on. That'll be out uh, next month. Really excited about that. That's a, a Western. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, So we talk about that. We talk about how he fights through imposter syndrome and we talk about not being afraid to fail. And Christian is actually super inspiring from a creative standpoint because he has this way about him where he just goes for things and he knows it's going to suck and he does it anyway. And then he leaves it up for to reference later on. But I so admire him and uh, his ability to go out there and just try things and like, man, To fight through imposter syndrome and to not be afraid to fail are two really difficult things to figure out, and Christian just goes about it with such a great, like, relaxedness, is that a word, to it? Um, He's just great. Christian is awesome, and you're going to find that out for yourself. So, without further ado, please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 138, with Christian Piles. Theme song time. I'm honored to be one of the first things you see when you wake up. That's right. I did that on purpose. I was like, a lot I, of people I need today that. to be good. And I'm going to start it with opening my eyes to coffee and Christian. Mm. What more do we need? What more do we need? <laughs> no idea. Kubo. That's what that's, we need. That's right. He is over there. He was being crazy earlier. So he's still a puppy. So he goes through these like fits of just energy. So we're fine mm. for a second. And then he just wants me dead. I'm Gets like, the zoomies, is starts running around. Yeah, he does. He does. It's okay. So you did that uh, puppy yoga. Yeah. How yeah. crazy was that? Did Dude, what? Ha- what happened? It was nuts. Okay, so I'm just looking around. It's the middle of the Corona. I haven't seen like anybody in months. I've been stuck at the house. I'm going nuts. So I'm like, okay, sure. I want to get out. I want to do stuff. What can we do? So I start looking around the area and I find a thing called puppy yoga. And I'm like, okay, I enjoy yoga. Puppy yoga sounds wild. I'm gonna do it. Fair. So I show up, not really knowing what to expect other than puppies and yoga. And there, <laughs> dude, it's a room full of people. And then all these little dogs just running around. And I'm like, what the crap is going on? I love this. And like, they all just like start rushing towards me. It's the cutest thing ever. They start doing all these yoga positions. And then they're like crawling on top of your back, jumping over your legs, trying to like <laughs> jump in your face. And you just, you start petting them because they're puppies. You can't say no to a puppy. Sure. Um, and then of course, you know, as puppies do, they start relieving themselves in the middle of class <laughs> so on top of yoga mats and stuff so then oh, um, no. 
they had code yellow and code brown. So as a yoga instructor would yell, code brown. And then somebody else would run into the room and start cleaning up. And I'm like, dude, this is legit. I want to do this all the time. I mean, it <laughs> smells. It smells terrible. <laughs> but I love it. Because they're puppies. That's right. That's right. You're that's like, it's yoga. not their fault. It's not their fault. Yeah. It's, they that's so themselves. funny. To think puppies. Like, I, you know, I've heard of goat yoga. Yeah. I've heard of that. Which that seems like, I mean, minus P, obviously. It's much easier cleanup. You know, they're, they're like pellet kind of yeah. stuff you know little machine guns <laughs> yeah <laughs> puppies don't do that puppies no, don't do that they were not pellets i imagine doing like downward dog and then you just see like a tiny pug just squatting in front of you <laughs> like what is happening <laughs> that happened that happened <laughs> oh man yeah it was i'd recommend it i didn't even know it was a thing i knew about I, yoga either. i did not know about puppy yoga yeah me neither do it again yeah. Okay. How how many how many puppies were there? If you had to guess, there were three. Three. Okay. Yeah. Just enough for chaos. Yeah, it was a perfect <laughs> amount for chaos. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want one, because then one's gonna like pick a friend, and then like it's gonna be fine. Yeah, I mean dogs are loyal. Like I, I that's want true. Attention too, you know. What I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I go and do puppy yoga and I don't get something done to me, I don't want it. Yeah. I don't want yeah. it. That's funny. That's I mean, funny. cat yoga, they would just run away. That's true. That's true. Cats are doing their own yoga where you can't uh -huh. see them because they're the worst. Yeah, downward cat somewhere in a corner. Yeah, you know? who needs it? Who needs it? Are you a dog or a cat person? I, I enjoy both, but if I had to pick, I would definitely go with dogs. Yeah, yeah, I'm a dog person. Not, yeah. not a big fan of cats. They're all right. I, I had a cat. Well, at one point, we had like a ton of stray cats and whatnot growing up, but we had a cat one time. He was like my my buddy and i remember i was like a kid and i had him and i didn't have a shirt on because why would i and i had him here and then my brother came and scared him and he clawed all the way up my front and then down my back and that was the last time i held the cat yeah <laughs> i can see why you're a dog person now yeah yeah i mean i feel like i was always a dog person but that kind of solidified it now like if a kitten comes up to me i'm like oh you go over here. You, you, you do that. But yeah, yeah, not bad. A not scarring bad. experience. It sounds That's like. right. That's right. Did you just travel somewhere? I was out west. Yeah, I was shooting some videos out in Utah, and then I flew over to Denver. Nice. I was there for about, I was gone for about a week and a half. How was that? It, it was so much fun. Yeah. So, I'm not a, I live in Florida. I'm not a big Florida guy. I want to go to like North Carolina, somewhere where you get nicer sure. weather, better totally. season, not as humid. I hear you. So, so I fly out to Utah, and the first morning I'm there, I just go outside to watch the sunrise, sip some coffee, do some journaling. It's 47 degrees. Oh. It, I know, but it's oh. sunny, so you still have like the sun rays on your face, but it's cold. And I'm like, dude, this is amazing. Like, forget <laughs> North Carolina. I just, I just want to get out of Florida at this point. Yeah. But it yeah. was so nice. And then um, I had the very uh, first shoot, the very first day I was there, and then but my second shoot in Utah was towards the end of the week. So I was just editing and kind of goofing around, around in the middle of those two shoots. Mm -hmm. So I would go out exploring and stuff. So I went out to the desert with some friends I met. And it, it was just so dry, dude. Like, I yeah? Carry, yeah. I have to carry some chapstick in my pocket to this day. And it's like a month later. Really? Like, it split my lip. Yeah. I'm, uh, oh, I'm no. a Florida boy. So I wasn't used to that kind of sure. uh, weather, you know. But it was, it was a great experience. I would definitely go again. Right on, right on. How long were you there? A week? A week in Utah and then like three or four days in Denver. Nice, nice. Yeah. Had you been to Denver before? No, it was my first time. Did you feel the elevation? When I was um, there, I didn't. A lot of people were like, you got to be worried about the elevation. And I was like, no, all right. Not that I, I can't really remember struggling at all. Yeah, me neither. I was so worried because I, yeah. I have asthma. And I was like, okay. And they're like, it's like a mile up. I was like, okay, Absolutely. all right. All right. And it wasn't, no. I wasn't suffocating when I got out of the plane. <laughs> That'll do it. So I went to Nepal and I think it was 2017. Oh. It. Yeah. What? So that's elevation right there. You're like 10,000 feet up in the air, climbing a mountain all day. Eee. So to do that, you're required to do mandatory workouts. So oh. like 90 burpees, like all the time, push ups, run laps. It, it's crazy. It's really it's stupid. Yeah. Um, it was like the tour guides, they sent you this workout that you're required to do. Mm -hmm. So you have to do all these workouts leading up to the trip, and then you're supposed to run a 10K. 
<laughs> like a week before wow. or something. I know it's ridiculous. <laughs> so, so maybe that's why I didn't really feel it in Denver, just because I had all that training sure. years ago. That's what I like to tell myself. I'm out of <laughs> shape now. I'm, <laughs> I'm a skinny little guy now. But, well, yeah. now I know I can never go to Nepal. You man, should. Uh, 10K, man. I, I, running, running and me do not, do not agree. Do not okay. agree at all. Okay. I'll just go and not run a 10K and see what happens. Uh, 10K brisk walk. There you go. There you go. I can 10K brisk walk. Yeah. Over I the can... course of like five days. Yes. Yes. There's no time limit, right? Just like. No, no. Uh, I won't like tell a, anybody. Yeah. It's like a Fitbit, but you like get rid of the day. You know, Maybe so it just take counts. it off every once in a while. Like, oh, yeah. battery died again. My bad. <sighs> I tried. I wa- yeah. I did my steps. I swear I did. Yeah, I charged it for like five minutes. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool though. Doing a lot of traveling for work. Yeah. Keeps yeah. it keeps it interesting. Yeah, you get to see different parts of the country and sure, the sure, world and all that. Right on, right on. So I, I it's interesting because when I have people on the show, ninety percent of them I don't know them beforehand. Okay. And so it's always fun to talk to people who I actually do know and I've worked with because I'm like, oh, right. The getting to know each other part isn't here because we already do. We're besties. We're besties. Yeah, because we met on empty, right? Yeah. That was the first one? Yeah, it was like January 2nd or something. That's crazy. This year. I feel feel like it's been longer. I feel like we've been working together for much longer. It's been a long year, my bro. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) (laughs) It's like... This year has been going for five years. That's true. That's true. Um, That's why. Because it was yeah. 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, we yep. met. I like, I like to say we met at a gas station with a video camera. I did. <laughs> People are like, hey, where's this going? That's right. I won't tell. And the rest was history. The rest, the rest was history. history. <laughs> and then you realized that you're stuck with us because you're good at it. <laughs> <laughs> What have I done? That's right. No, I love, I love it. I love every second of it. That was, um, so I got on empty because of Slim. He yep. introduced me to you guys. And that was, I recorded empty the day, the night after I got back from the Dominican Republic. That's where my parents live. So I was visiting, visiting for Christmas. Oh. So I was like dead tired, but I want to get into <laughs> filmmaking because I do video marketing, just all this other promotional commercial stuff that I'm not exactly interested in. It's just something I'm good at. Sort sure, of thing. sure. But I want to make movies. That's my goal. Yeah, yeah. So Slim's like, hey, man, like we're shooting a short film with this guy from L.A. Do you want to come? And I'm like, heck, yeah. Like I'm just some kid from the DR with no filmmaking experience. And you want me to work with a guy from L.A.? Like that was a terrible <laughs> pitch. And I'm like... Yeah, because I'm down to try anything. Like, I'm not going to say no to an opportunity. If I suck, I suck, but I'm going to give it a shot. Smart. Yeah, so I get there, it goes well, and and, um, I remember I was just so terrified because I'm thinking, these guys don't know who they're working with. (laughs) They're they're never going to hire me again. And I just blew it. And then, so like, that was it. I didn't really hear anything afterwards, nothing. Sure. And then later on in August, I believe, yeah, mm-hmm. it was August, Slim again is like, hey man, Chris, Chris Foster, he's working on a Western, which I love Western movies. Yeah. He's working yep. on a Western and he wants you to be the DP. Are you down? I'm like, holy crap. Yes. <laughs> I don't know anything about it, but I'm like, yes, I'm in. <laughs> glad they liked my work on empty enough to bring me back for a western yeah so yeah I, I mean and ever since hey we're working on number three right now that's right that's right and i'm glad i'm stuck with you guys well good because uh it, sorry you, you can't get out that easy <laughs> oh oh no yeah oh no that's so funny that you went into empty you're like oh i don't know what i'm doing because you were we felt the same way about you because the way that you were working, you're like, oh, I'm thinking about this shot. And like, maybe you just faked it till you made it. But everything you did, you're like, oh, I think we could do this. And you had ideas and they worked. And like the footage, you've seen it. Was, it's pretty freaking good. I was surprised. I was terrified to look at the footage. The first time I saw it was, <laughs> I think, last month when I was watching it with you guys. Because I was sure. like, yeah, it's, it's trash. I'm not, I don't want to look at that. That was my one shot. <laughs> and then you guys are like, yeah, man, it looks so good. Have you seen it? I'm like, no, no, I haven't. <laughs> and you're showing me I'm like, oh, wow, that is pretty good. That's so funny. Really? You left empty thinking you did a bad job? Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. I feel that way after every job I do as well. 
<laughs> it's the imposter syndrome, man. Like you can be the the best dude in the area, but you're still always comparing yourself to like Steven Spielberg or right, like right, Timothy Chalamet, who are these incredible like actors and directors. And then like I'm I'm me. You know what I mean? Yeah, you are. So yeah. <laughs> so you know, I always compare myself to like all these amazing names, and I'm like yeah, sure. I blew it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm then, glad you guys liked it. How do you have the confidence then to have ideas? Cause on empty, you like, you had ideas and you were like, let's try this. Let's do this shot. We can do this. And like, I didn't see the panic at all. You well, did I mean, very well. Thank you. I hide it. Uh, <laughs> like I can be, I can be shaking on the inside, but I'm never going to let the client know that I'm terrified. Smart. Because if they sense fear and if you're leading a team, if your teammates sense that the boss is terrified about something, they're going to feel terrified. Good point. So even though you're shaking on the inside, you just carry yourself away where it's like, yeah, everything's under control. That was supposed to happen. All the batteries are charged. All yeah. the SD cards are wiped. We're good. There you and go. Then, and then it's also knowing I've been doing video for like seven years at this point. I know wow. what I'm doing. I have what it takes. It's the first time doing a short film. Sure. But I know what I'm doing. That sort of thing. That makes I didn't realize you've been doing video for seven years. It's yeah. a long time. Yeah. Did you do that in the Dominican Republic? No, I did I did like stupid stuff in the Dominican Republic. You know, <laughs> you know how the Didn't we all, Christian? Didn't we all? <laughs> no, so I remember the first thing I made. Um, it was my first year of high school. We were supposed to make a movie like just some video with movie maker for a computer class. I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't really exactly passionate about movie making yet, mm -hmm. but it's kind of one of the first steps that got me there. So we're supposed to make this movie. I, I consider myself a funny person sometimes. I agree. And I was like, okay, how can I spice this up? How can I do something my classmates aren't doing? Cause I want to, I want to win sort of thing. Sure. So I made a thing called baby Nader. It was uh, a parody of Terminator, but with my sister's baby dolls. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Perfect, perfect. So it's this pretty much a baby doll trying to kill me for some reason. I think because I like, bothered my sister about something. I don't even remember at this point. Good reason, it's good reason. Yeah, so like, that's, that's the stupid stuff I made in the DR. <laughs> um, and then when I moved up to the U.S., it was more just like I worked at a church for a few years. Nice. Like a bunch of like promotional stuff, conferences, sure. all that announcement videos. Not exciting or fulfilling, but experience. Sure. Slim did that for um, a while. Yeah. Yeah. We all got to do it at some point. Or you cut life. your teeth, man. <laughs> exactly. And yep. I mean, you would make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos working with those guys. Yeah. So, yeah, like I got my fair share of experience doing that. Smart. Um, I don't even remember where I was going with this. <laughs> um, yeah. So then after that, I start. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to make movies. I don't know how. I don't know how to get started. I eventually went off, bought all my own gear with money that I saved up working at the church. Nice. Started my own video production company called Piles of Media. My last name is Piles. So it's like Love a it. play on words. Love a lot it. of people think it's a typo. <laughs> um, but I'm like, no, it's my last name. I, I got to explain it. I went through a similar thing. I had a media company a bunch of years ago called Balanced Media mm -hmm. with two L's. All right. And they were like, Balance balance is one L. I'm like, not this one. Yeah, it's, it's like, why would we hire you if you can't even spell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's not a spelling bee. It's a media company, okay? That's right. That's I feel why. your pain. I feel your yeah. pain. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Piles of media. Piles of media. Yeah, so I started doing videos through that. Got me into marketing and commercials and all that stuff, which is where I am today. Right on. Right on. Right on. So, you, so wait, so you were in the Dominican Republic in the high school. Yeah, I moved. So I was born in Indiana. I'm oh. a northern boy. Okay. Then when I was one year old, I moved to the Dominican Republic. My parents are missionaries. They still live there. Oh, cool. Yeah. And when I was 19, I moved up to the U.S. to get into video production. Wow. So, yeah. You straight um, up grew up in Dominican Republic. Yeah. Fluent Spanish. I know some French because of it. Um, Dude. Yeah. Was your first language English then? Or was it Spanish? Uh, I learned both at the same time. Really? Was it, that it hard? Was yeah, it was confusing. So it's like, 
I remember one particular word, Luna, which is moon. Yep. I'd speak a little bit of English and Spanish, just some words I would say in English, others in Spanish. So I remember just like looking up at the moon and saying Luna, which, you know, but any other thing I'd be talking in English, sometimes I flip flop and it took me a while to get speaking. And I'm still a relatively quiet guy, which is probably has something to do with that. Just <laughs> being sure. quiet as a kid, not knowing what was going on. Sure. And I remember being in school and like the teachers are just like moving their mouth and all this noise is coming out. And I was like, <laughs> what is happening? My parents aren't saying any of this. But you just pick it up. Door of the Explorer is actually flipped. Oh. So, yeah. And this is just stuff I never thought about because I was growing up in a Spanish speaking country. Sure. So, so Dora is actually teaching us English and she's like, put in the seat, map. And oh. Like, map. <laughs> so when I was six, uh, my family visited the U.S. And I remember I was at my grandfather's house and we were watching Dora the Explorer, but she was teaching us Spanish. And I'm like, dude, this is so weird. <laughs> Why is she trying to teach me Spanish? And then that's when it clicked. I'm like, oh, crap. Okay. I, like, I understand what's happening. I'm in another country, different languages. And, um, gotcha. SpongeBob was in Spanish. Oh, what? Does he sound I the know. same? No, it sounds different. <laughs> so when I, when I moved up here and I was 19 and I'd hear like SpongeBob in English, it just sounds so, so weird. Yeah. And it just stuff you wouldn't really think about. Sure. But, yeah. One of those things. Is SpongeBob in the Dominican Republic just like Squidward? <laughs> just... um, no, it's Calamardo. Scalamardo? Calamardo. Weird. Yeah. I like that. That's pretty cool. Patrick's Patricio. <laughs> I know. It's, it's crazy. So when you came over, you're like, wait a second. You, you call him Patrick? Yeah, it's like, what in tarnation's going on over here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Patricio. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Patricio? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was my SpongeBob experience. That's fantastic. So, yep. you, you, so you've got Spanish, you've got English, you've mm -hmm. got a little bit of French. Yep. Is there anything else under the hood here? Not that I can speak. I can understand a lot of Portuguese and Italian because they're oh. all derived from Latin. So, so once you have like Spanish similar. and French, yeah, you can kind of pick, pick apart okay. some of the other languages. Okay, that makes sense. I took a couple months of Italian and I was nice. like, wait, it's the same. <laughs> it's like change a letter from amigo yeah, just, to amico. Yeah, oh. I got to spice it up with a fancy accent. You're so, solid. A little, little bit of the hand. Yeah. And then eat some pasta, it. play some that's, Assassin's Creed. That's it. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> So you came over here for mm -hmm. video production. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That so, seems like a pretty big deal. It was. Um, it was a risk. Got to <laughs> risk it to get the biscuit, I like to say. I love it. I but love it. no, I knew at that point I wanted to make movies. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how. I didn't have any experience other than Baby Nader. I, I, I didn't know <laughs> what I was need. doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you can get Baby Nader under your belt, you're solid. You're That's ready for production. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I remember I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan and I'm a big Star Wars fan. I appreciate your, your posters from the background. Yes, yes. We've um, connected for multiple reasons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, so when I was 14, and again, like I've loved watching movies all my life. When I was a toddler, I'd pop in a VCR every single day and watch a movie. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't really something I knew I wanted to do until I was watching Lord of the Rings one day. And I don't know why, but I just started roasting it and like cracking all these jokes in the dialogue. <laughs> so I inserted myself as a character, like as if I was Aragorn Amazing. and Gandalf just died. And instead of him saying like, this place is going to be swarming by or with orcs by nightfall or something, or like this place is going to be swarming with mosquitoes by nightfall. And, oh, <laughs> just like stupid stuff like that. Sure. So you're, I started cracking all these jokes. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, this is kind of funny. I wrote a parody for each one at that point just all these jokes amazing so then that's what made me want to learn how to make movies i started just going on youtube watching all these tutorials about lighting editing cameras i had nothing like no lights no cameras i didn't know what i was doing mm -hmm. so i wanted to go to full sale after after high school didn't we all <laughs> <laughs> didn't we all um so i didn't go to full sale we had some nope. family friends that worked at the church i i worked at for a while and they're mm -hmm. like, hey, just come intern with us. We'll teach you video production. And I'm like, no, I want to go to full sale. 
So that was like a back and forth for probably two or three years. Mm-hmm. May, them inviting, me refusing. I was like, no, I want to go to Full Sail and learn movie making. <laughs> I don't want to make announcement videos. Yeah. Um, so then, and Full Sail was like 80,000 bucks at the time. I don't know what it is now. Yeah. It, it was expensive. And for a mm-hmm. broke kid from the Dominican Republic, like that's a lot of money. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would teach English over the summer and I would make, I think, like $50 a month. So when you're comparing that to, <laughs> exactly, when you're, you're comparing like, the rest of my life, I would pay it half off. <laughs> it, yeah. So when you're comparing $50 a month to $80,000 tuition, you're like, yeah, this is yeah. impossible. Yeah. So the people from church, they're like, look, we're starting this new leadership academy. We want you to be part of it. We'll pay for everything. We'll bring you up here. I'm like, okay, this is kind of a cool deal. Still don't want to do it. I don't care about <laughs> leadership. Sure. But I'll only do it if I can work with your video guy. And they're like, okay, cool. Flew me up. My Smart. sister came along too. Um, and I just, I, that was my one shot. I didn't want to mess it up. I'm like, okay, I need to learn video production. My parents are still there. If I fail, I have nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. I barely know anybody here. I just want to make videos. Sure. So I just gave him my all. I was, I was working with a guy called Sergio Munoz. Um, he taught me everything he knew. I love the guy to death. I owe him a lot. But he taught me just like editing, lighting, cinematography. Wow. And yeah, if it wasn't for Sergio, I wouldn't be where I am today. So really? I owe, yeah, yeah. That's cool. So. And this was, where was this? Like Sergio uh, and the church and all that. Fort Myers, Florida. Fort Myers. So yeah. how'd you wait? How'd you get linked up into Fort Myers then? That's where your That's grandparents? Not, no, my grand, um, my grandparents are like in Indiana. Okay, so long story short, the church I worked at, mm-hmm. my dad was the lead pastor's youth pastor in Indiana a long time ago. So that's where the okay. family connection was. Got it. Yeah. So it was just I got lucky. I don't know. But sure, I'm blessed. Okay. It was a great opportunity. I didn't want to waste it. I gave it my all. Eventually, they hired me, and I got good. Over sure. time, I got better. Started my own thing, and that's where I am today. Interesting. Yeah, man. Okay. It was it was a scary experience. I moved here with a suitcase of clothes and like a hundred dollars that my dad gave me the day of, like, dude, the flight. And he's like, "Okay, don't waste this on video games." And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay." <laughs> so yeah, I moved to the states with my PlayStation Three, suitcase of clothes, and hundred bucks. And then That's I, all you need. I just yeah. So you need, and you went to Fort Myers of all places in the U.S. Fort Myers, <laughs> yeah, not not very exciting. Could have right. been Utah with forty-seven degrees, but no. I mean, Fort Myers could have been, could have been. That's crazy. I that's actually, that's really cool though because you had this idea of what you wanted, and then you got the opportunity and you went for it. There's some courage in that. That's scary. Yeah. It's, it was terrifying. Again, like with Empty. Yeah. The <laughs> short film I did with you guys was like, crap, I've never done this before. I only made Baby Nader. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but this is where I want to go. Movie making, yeah. short films, whatever it takes, that's where I'm headed. Sure. I feel like over time, I'm over here, which is still video production. Mm-hmm. But it's, again, marketing, commercials, promoting cupcakes and just all this random stuff that I'm not passionate about. It's not fulfilling. Sure. I want to do this. I'm in the same genre of work, which is like cameras and all that stuff, but it's Mm -hmm. not what I want to do. So right now I'm feeling and Corona being stuck at the house with all this free time just kind of gave me a lot of time to think. And also like write short films and stuff um, of my own. But it Mm -hmm. gave me time to think of, I'm doing this. Why am I not pursuing filmmaking? And it it got me thinking to the point of like, I could be doing construction or just like any other random job. And I would feel the exact same way, if not better, and still pursue filmmaking. And I've tried to explain this to some people. And I think they actually (laughs) lost respect for me. And they're like, "But (laughs) but you're a video guy. How do you, how would you just give up video production? And it's like, because I'm not fulfilled by what I'm doing. Sure. It's not, not what I want thing. to do. It's what I'm known for, but it's not what makes me feel alive. What makes me feel alive is telling stories, writing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's what I want to do. 
So I'm putting all of my mental energy into um, these commercials, editing. It's like putting together a puzzle, but you don't know what the puzzle looks like yet. You're just kind of like drawing it as the client gives you some more stuff to work with. Sure. And you have to cut up all the pieces and paint it and color it and stuff and then put it together. That's what like video production is. Um, so like I'm putting all of my mental energy into that. By the time I'm done, I have no more mental energy to work on the stuff I want to make. Right. Which is why I want, <laughs> and it sounds terrible. I just want like a boring job. Yeah, that totally. Is so painfully mind numbing. Yeah. <laughs> that I have all this creative energy to just daydream and think and write if I have an extra five minutes. So by the yeah. time I get home, it's like, okay, I have all these ideas. Let's make it happen. Instead of where I am now, it's like, ugh, I'm home. I just want to like sit down and not do anything and not think. Sure. You know? Yeah. So that, that's, that's the plight of the creative, I find. Because yeah. a lot of people, it's like, it, making this stuff that we do is it's a lot of work it's a lot mm -hmm. of time it's a lot of on your feet it's a lot of figuring things out on the spot it takes a lot of energy so if you have a job that takes any of that away there's so little left to where you don't have enough gas to even get yourself really going mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a weird existence yeah but that's where the drive comes from you know what i mean that's where like that fire of like this is what i really want to do i find that's like an extra tank of gas that not everybody has Mm -hmm. to pursue those things yeah That's and crazy. and now that i've realized that and know where i am mm -hmm. it helps because i'm like okay i can budget to make a certain amount of videos that'll pay my bills pay whatever i need to pay and then the rest can all just be creative stuff there you go so then like working with slim on the western with what we're currently working on now like i feel like i'm on the right track sure and also i think that whatever your passion is like it can be music it can be nasa like you want to be an astronaut whatever like whatever it is if you work towards it and fight for it with everything you have i think no matter what happens along the way you're going to be on the right track mm -hmm. you're going to meet like-minded people and mm -hmm. over time and like i feel old this is the oldest i've ever been <laughs> but in the grand scheme of things i'm still pretty young i'm 26 there you go there so you i'm go. like okay i got i'm giving myself some grace here Sure. Like over time, like I never knew I would have met you. I never knew I would have met Chris Foster. Sure. And again, along the way, you're just pursuing these crazy dreams and you meet like-minded people and start working together. And I think that'll just push us further to where we want to be. I think so too. I think yeah. so too. And it, you know, I, I always say that like the only way you are guaranteed not to achieve your dream is if you quit. Mm -hmm. It's the only yeah. guarantee. Cause as long as you keep going, there's always a chance. It's not saying it, like for sure, and it might take ways that you weren't exactly expecting, but it's, I don't know. It's kind of cool because, you know, I'm always talking about like, you guys are the Avengers now, <laughs> you know, you've got like Slim, Chris, you, and then I'll put myself in there just because why not? Uh, hey, you're, you're an Avenger as well. You know, we've made some pretty cool stuff and it, it's, I realized the importance of putting people in the right place, which me and Slim have talked about that before. Because we shot blisters last year, and it all went terrible. <laughs> and then uh, we're like, what if we just did it again? And this time, we had you as the DP. We had Chris directing. We had Slim producing. It's like we put people in chairs where they can excel. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you've seen some of the footage. I mean, it's crazy. And you shot that. You know, We tried shooting it before, but we didn't have you. And they look night and day different, uh, pun intended. But it's, it, I mean, it just goes to show what passion does. Yeah. You know, you get someone in there who's like really into this stuff. It can't help but be great. Thanks, man. I'm excited about it. No. Um, yeah, I love Westerns. Same. Uh, Same. I was going to say something and I just forgot what it was, but it was along those lines. Yeah. So. <laughs> Pursuing your dream, don't give up. Yeah, good, yeah. good note. Oh, it's, it's right here. I think can't I can see it. what it is. <laughs> Did you, so when you, oh, man, like, like, you know, your equipment, you know, your camera and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Is that all yep. things that you like learned by doing? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Um, I mean, there's, there's just the basic, okay, you want to shoot in this frame rate. You want your shutter speed to do this. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times you know what to do, but you don't know why you're doing it. And I think once you know the why, 
it makes sense. So like aperture, whatever, it's gonna affect your lighting, but it's also gonna affect your depth of field. What kind of focus, what kind of feeling do you wanna make the audience feel in this particular shot? Mm -hmm. um, am I introducing a character? Am I gonna have the camera on a slider pushing forward to draw the audience in? Like it's just all this stuff that you pick up over time. You wanna know, you want to have the audience feel a certain way. And then the rest is just experimentation over time. You try yeah. something, you fail, you pick it apart. There's nothing wrong with failure. A lot of people think failure is the end, but to me, I try to fail a lot <laughs> because that's the best way to learn. Like if, if you fail and just stop doing it, that's, that's quitting. And there's a difference between failing and losing. I think if you fail and stop trying, that's losing. If you fail and keep on going, that's experience. You pick apart what happened that made you fail. What, what did I do wrong? What can I do better? What happened that I can do better next time? Did this piece of gear not work properly? Did I not clean a sensor? Sure. Did a battery die? Did I not charge something? Whatever. Like all this stuff happens through failure. And when there's money on the line, you learn from <laughs> failure really fast. I had to give my fair share of, not fair share, but I've had to give refunds before. And like when you're, you know, it's a reputation. You own a business and stuff. And it's like, okay, crap. I'm not going to do that again. Sure. So you learn really fast. And I'm, I mean, failure sucks, mm -hmm. but I'm all about learning from it. So okay. I don't mind failing. Is that something that you, did you learn to be okay with failure? Like, did you always have that? Or was that something you had to get used to? Um, I think I've always had it. Being in the church, like they'll they'll critique the crap out of your work and it just gives you <laughs> thick skin sure. to the point where you just kind of automatically know what they're looking for, what they're going to say. And I'm like, okay, they're probably going to say this if I show them the video now. Mm -hmm. What should I do differently so that they don't say that, so sure. <laughs> that they don't nitpick? So there's that. But also at the same time, I think just all my life, I've always been trying to improve myself. I want to be the best. I want to be a filmmaker. If I suck now, what do I have to do now to get me where I want to be? Sure. So just always finding ways to improve myself. Right on, right on. I find that I, I find that difficult personally mm. to fail and just be like, okay, because I don't know. I think I put too much on myself that I, I feel like if I failed, I wasted everyone's time. You mm. know what I mean? Where that's an unhealthy way to look at it. I've realized having worked on blisters now. Yeah. Uh, but I, you and Chris, I find creatively, it's really fun to watch because you guys are so like on the same wavelength that when you're creating shots and stuff like that, it's like you guys are speaking the same language where I don't even know what aperture or any of that stuff you just said is, <laughs> but you guys are like speaking another language. I'm like, this is kind of cool. So you want to make movies. I do. And so how many on average are you? So seven years, right? Would you say a majority of your stuff is the, like uh, commercials kind of things like that for small businesses and yeah. showcases, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, okay. that's probably like 90, 95% of what I do. I do real estate stuff as well. Again, oh, not, cool. it's not exciting, but pays the bills, pays the bills. Sure. Now, so earlier this year, I started a YouTube channel again called piles of media. It, it does not represent my, my <laughs> business at all. My business <laughs> is the videos I do for work are a lot better than the ones I do on YouTube. <laughs> disclaimer if you ever look stuff up but I saw that as a way to experiment with video production like if I, I see YouTube as a safe place to fail again I don't want to fail with money okay. on the line but goofing around with a few friends is very safe in the grand scheme of things sure so it's like okay how can I make short not short films but just short little videos telling a broader story mm -hmm. uh, oh thanks for subscribing I just saw hey that <laughs> Ooh. Live update, son. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so it's like, how can I practice camera moves, storytelling, uh, like movie style lighting compared mm -hmm. to commercial lighting? Because there is a difference to it. Sure. Um, so how can I practice this safely on YouTube? And I won't say, I'm currently working on something called The Story So Far, Ooh. which was slowed down because of COVID. But Fair. it's kind of like an exaggerated more exciting version of my life which will spoiler alert involve nerf wars oh sweet uh it's a ghost story it has a little bit of everything i love it 
and I mean, the pacing is terrible in one of them. Trash. Uh, <laughs> the second one's called Trash Day, and it's about me taking out the trash. And if you knew where I live, the dumpster is like really far away from where I am, but I'm too lazy to drive, and I don't want to put trash bags on my car. That's disgusting. Fair. So I walk it. So the pacing in the in the Trash Day video is it is really bad, and I watch it and I'm like, dude, this sucks. I just want to stop watching it. <laughs> but the same day. I justify it by being like, yeah, the pacing's terrible on the walk there, and I want the audience to like know what it feels like every time we have to take out the trash. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm doing that. I started a, a cooking show over quarantine lockdown. I was like, Sweet. dude, I have nothing else to do. Might as well <laughs> start a cooking show because why not? Why not? Yeah, and like, I, am I a chef? Absolutely not. Are the recipes good? No, they're not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but it it's just something I wanted to make goofing around. Sure. Um, but I want to have on the YouTube channel. So the movies I kind of want to make, I want to make Lord of the Rings, like medieval fantasy type stuff. Hell I yeah. love sci-fi. So I want to do some sci-fi stuff. And I love superheroes like Marvel, Batman, DC. I love all that stuff. Love it. So I want to make movies like that. So I want to practice those different styles on YouTube. Sure. YouTube's going to be more comedy based to, compared to the movies that I want to make, which will be a little more serious, obviously with hints of humor in them. Sure. But I want to do like some superhero stuff on the YouTube down the road. Um, so it's like a parody of like DC and Marvel, like yeah. baby hater type stuff. But, <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So, so that's I where that. I see myself taking the YouTube channel, just again to practice and a safe place to fail. People sure. see the, the crap I'm producing on YouTube and are like, dude, like, what is this? It's a safe place <laughs> to fail. I'm learning storytelling, I'm learning like cinematography that is more movie related compared to just, Oh yeah, here's a product, buy it. Sure. That's super interesting that like, I don't know. It's like you, you have, uh, is confidence the word maybe it's like you have the confidence to fail. Like how do you look at something? Maybe it's just my insecurities, but how do you look at something when you're done and be like, that was awful. Moving on. Like, (laughs) you know, (laughs) Um, <laughs> how do you, uh, yeah, how no, do you it, keep going if you if you make stuff that you don't enjoy <laughs> do i mean you, like, i do find the nugget yeah i mean find the yeah find the nugget it's embarrassing i mean trash day again like i'm embarrassed how that's <laughs> out in the public like it's bad but i but also like it up. yeah i mean i could hide it but i also like to think maybe 10 years ago 10 years from today I'm 36. I'm on the couch, hopefully making movies by this point. Yeah, yeah. Just got off like, of a, the set of Marvel. <laughs> yeah, it's like the next day, just I'm sipping some coffee, holding an Oscar. There you go. So I see YouTube being a visual journal, maybe. So okay. I ask myself, how far have I come? 10 years from now, I'm going to go on YouTube. I'm going to start from the very beginning. Ooh, trash day. <laughs> that sucks and even even now watching it i was watching it like i don't know like two weeks ago or something with somebody and i was like "Ooh, i would have done this differently there's a point where it's like an internal monologue of my character but it's like from behind and it's just a long camera angle and it it sucks you know what i mean <laughs> so in my head i'm thinking "Ooh, it should have been a reaction shot instead of just a long take from behind Mm-hmm. cut to my face as i'm thinking those words and then cut back to me walking towards the dumpster that would have been better it would have helped with the pacing it'll be visually interesting so i like to look back at the stuff i've made and also knowing the video the very first thing you ever make whether you're an actor whether you're a director no matter what you do the very first try is always going to be terrible and yeah. you have to be okay with that like if if jay-z his first song sucked and he's like, you know what? I'm no good at this. I should probably try something else. <laughs> and he just gave up singing altogether and tried something else. It's like, no, dude, you're Jay-Z. <laughs> Don't give up. Sure. Just keep on. Keep on trying, bro. You'll get better, I promise. You're going to be a billionaire one day. Right. Just keep on singing. That's so such a has, healthy way to look at it. <laughs> yeah, so you have to be okay knowing that you're going to suck. Again, I look at Baby Nader. I look at Trash and I'm like, okay, yeah, like that's bad. But I know what to do better. I know I should draw a storyboard, have a reaction shot in there somewhere. Um, yeah, just got to be okay with sucking. 
Sure. Knowing what to do better. That's uh yeah, it's a very, very healthy way to to learn. I feel like me definitely, but I feel like a lot of people as well do not have that same mindset or have a harder time accepting that mindset. I mean, you know what you should do in like ten years remake trash day. Yes. <laughs> yep. Be like, this is what I've learned. Just keep remaking trash day until it's a masterpiece. Yeah. And it was and the thing with the YouTube ones is I'm in those videos, so I can't be the guy behind the camera. So I'm just like telling my friends, okay, get this angle, get this shot. I'm going to walk here <laughs> and cut. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then we do it. And then like, it might be out of focus or like, it might, I don't know, it's, it's something, but you can't trash talk. And again, like the friend that recorded it, he did a good job. He knows how to operate cameras. Sure. But you can't like trash talk their work. Or they're never going to help you again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And also they're doing you a favor. They're yeah. coming in on their day off. Yep. So it's like, yeah, you're only going to get a certain level of quality. And if I've, I'm, I already decided I want to be the guy shooting the superhero parody stuff. I'm sure. going to be the guy behind the camera so I can have full control over what's happening, how I want it to look like. Sure. And you just have to be okay with it. It's never going to be perfect. But if you if you don't put it out because it's not perfect, nobody's ever going to see it. Yeah, that's true. Because Fin excellent finished, not perfect is the goal. Yeah. yeah. Cause like nothing is ever going to be perfect. I'm not perfect and I never will be Steven Spielberg. He keeps on getting better and better. He's never going to be sure. perfect. He might be a standard, but he's not perfect. Right. Um, but is he excellent? Does he produce good stuff? Yeah. I'd say excellence is a goal, but never perfection. So if you're looking to be, for your product to be perfect, whether it's a book and it's like, yeah, it's not a certain word count. I got to write some more or no, I don't like this line of dialogue. I need to tweak it some more. And obviously, yes, you do want to make sure your product is good before mm -hmm. you put it out. Sure. But if you just constantly nitpick, you're never going to put it out because you're always looking for something to change. So I just say like, give yourself a deadline, make something deadline comes, you're not done with it all right, but this is as best as it's going to get with the time you gave yourself. Oh, that's uh, smart. That's yeah. smart. And it's a, that's a good practice to get into as well, like for any freelancer, because you have mm -hmm. deadlines and like learn to meet them. Yeah, those work on pipelines and stuff. Those deadlines are going to slap you in the face if you don't manage <laughs> your time properly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you got to like, again, when there's like, when it's a paid client and, and YouTube stuff, like eh, if I have free time, I'll work on it. I don't have a whole lot of free time these days, but if there is, I'm going to play with, I want it to pursue this, not this. Sure. So my free time is always dedicated to this, right. but, and I'm more lenient with this because there isn't money on the line. Your reputation isn't on the line yet, mm -hmm. but you are being paid to do this. That is your job. That's your livelihood, but, you know, so Priority. other people, yeah, they want to, they have their deadlines. So everything is just a very fast pace. So yeah, if you're not paying attention to those deadlines, they're not going to hire you again. Sure. So you have to respect those. Right. Is there a part of the process that's more difficult? Like, do you, is it the equipment that you pretty much get or is it shots or is it lighting? Is there a part where you're like, this part took me a little while to get. What took me a long time to get is lighting. Yeah. And that, that would just, when I was starting, that was my weakest part lighting and it's because they have all these rules of you want the key light facing the person then you have the backlight planning the hair the shoulders it helps them stand out from the background and you get that and you have some fill so you don't have a heavy shadow on this side of the face so you want a softer light coming from here mm -hmm. so like it was just rules but again i didn't understand why really i just knew okay i need to have a light here i need to have one over here and over here but mm -hmm. why once I understood the why, it's like, okay, I got it. And sometimes it'd be overexposed, which is like too bright. And I didn't even know what that word meant, meant when the first time somebody said it, it's like, oh, this is overexposed. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> sure. And I, was, and I was doing it for free at this time. So I, like, I wasn't too invested. Sure. But then like, again, you learn from it. Like, okay, that was too much light. I need to have less light this time. Mm -hmm. So you just play with it. Um, so lighting took me a while to understand and their rules and then you learn how to break the rules and knowing when to break the rules um so sure. 
now when I light stuff, I like to have a lot of color and make it pop. So if you go on my positive media Instagram, like scroll all the way to the bottom, there's going to be like a, a picture of like this guy smoking. It's my friend Trey. There's like a cool blue light shining through the smoke and behind him there's a red light. But other than that, there's no light on him whatsoever. So you don't have the key light lighting his face. You're just seeing light shine through the smoke, a little bit of detail on the side of his face, and then a little bit of red detail on the back. So it's kind of a silhouette. It's kind of showing a little detail, but I don't know. But that's the kind that I like. It's dark, it's colorful, it's stylized. The color is showing the details. And then the rest is just up to your imagination. I like it. I like it. You're the right guy for that newest one that we worked on then. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of that going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is there a favorite spot you like to be in as far as production goes, like DP, director, editor? Um, I, I like trying it all. I like writing a lot. I've been yeah. writing. Yeah, so the superhero thing, I wanted, I want to make like my magnum opus, I guess we can call it. Yeah. Not, not the YouTube funny stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I've been writing that since I was like 14. But again, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, how do I do this? I don't know writing. I don't know character development. A lot of my character development and storytelling came from me playing with action figures. Yeah. Making like Spider-Man fight Batman, like mixing of course. universes with portals and all that stuff. So it's, hey, yeah. it's like that was my storytelling experience, which wasn't really a whole lot. So I've been writing this thing since I was 14, not knowing how to make it, not knowing editing, not knowing directing, lighting, writing. But I know this is what I want to make. This is what I want my characters to do, what mm -hmm. their journey is, what their path is. And then I need to figure out how to make this dream become a reality. Sure. Um, but I, yeah, I love writing. I love telling stories. And then the rest is just knowing what gaps to fill. Sure. Of, okay, I need to learn audio. Mm -hmm. So I can monitor that on my camera. I need to learn lighting because a lot of times I'm just a one man army. If I need extra help, I'll just hire a set of hands from a couple other video guys that I know. Right. But for the most part, it's usually just me on smaller scale stuff. So I do a little bit of everything. I think it's good to know. So when you do have those big crews, they're like, okay, well, I want the lighting to be here so you can see this detail so it can make this feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to know every aspect of filmmaking, every, sure. I guess, area. So audio, I mean, audio, you just make it sound good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But, you know, camera, directing, I think it's really important to know every aspect of it, even if you're only working on one on a current project. I mm -hmm. think you need to know what to communicate to the team. Sure. I mean, that's the job of a director, isn't it? It's like you have to have a basic knowledge of everything. That way you can yeah. direct everything. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't direct. I thought that's, I could growing up and I was like, I want to be a director. And then I got on my first set and I was like, I don't want to be a director. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. Yeah. So bossy. That's right. That's right. It's like, you have to, you have to know the answers to these things. Yeah. yeah no, that's not for me. Chris. <laughs> Problem solving 24 seven. That's right. That's right. Is there something having come over here and done media production and stuff like that, how has it been different than you expected? Um, I would say the biggest challenges would be just the sales and marketing and taxes and all the stuff some the, kid the DR that just wants to make movies never would have thought about. Sure. That that's the hardest part. So like sales and I'm a I'm a charming guy. What can I say? I agree. Like I can I can schmooze people, but just like putting myself out there all the time and just I'd rather have a team. I'd rather just hire people to do all the random paperwork desk stuff so I can just get out there, mm -hmm. make videos, get paid, pay them, do my thing. Sure. But yeah, the the hardest part is definitely all the just random legal crap you have to run into signing NDAs all the confidentiality stuff sure. that you never thought about. So my, I was recommended to start an actual business registered through the government, all that stuff through a mentor of mine. Mm -hmm. And he was like, it'll be good for taxes. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll do it. I didn't know why it would be good for taxes. I didn't understand tax write-offs. Again, I'm a kid from the Dominican Republic. I don't, I just, <laughs> I make videos and I want to get paid for it. That's, sure. that's it. Like, I directed baby Nader. All right. 
I know. So, so <laughs> like now, now I'm a business owner and there's just all this random crap you never knew you'd have to deal with. That, that would be the hardest part, but the tax write-offs do come in handy sometimes. So. Sure. And sure. Nice. Yeah. That's something they never tell you about. They're like, Oh, just make a media company. That'd be cool. And you're like, yeah. Oh, right. There's this whole other legal side of it. Yeah. And then you have to go out and find the next client. You have to deal with um, like customer service. And then when that client's out, you need to go find the next project and the next project. Right. So, yeah. That's just stuff I never thought I would have to work with, which is just something I had to adapt to. That makes sense. Just the freelance aspect of it that like nothing happens on its own. You have mm-hmm. to go out and make it happen. And it's, yeah, it's a lot of work. And I have to, <laughs> that, I have to cons- think of it as like a caveman or a lion and I have it written on a piece of paper by my computer, like be a lion, be a caveman. And anybody that sees that note is like, dude, what is this guy smoking? What's going on? <laughs> but if you think about it, a lion is a predator. A lion is never going to eat unless it goes out, hunts, hunts a gazelle, then it's going to eat, provides True. for his family, whatever. Mm-hmm. People aren't going to, once you have a reputation, people will come to you. Yep. They know your name. They know you produce good stuff. They're going to come. But when you're starting out, you have to be a lion. You have to be the caveman that goes out hunting every single morning, finding stuff to eat. Sometimes it's a small gazelle. Sometimes you just fought a bear and it's going to feed you for a month. You don't know what it is, but you have to go out and do it or you're going to starve. Right. So I have the note that says, be a caveman, be a lion, right beside my computer. And I see it every single day. I love it. I love it. I, I remember uh, a bunch of years ago, there was a study that talked about the, they, it was like, I think it was Harvard, Harvard or yeah, one of the crazy Ivy League schools. And they did a statistic where it was the people who wrote down their goals and looked at them every day had a significantly higher chance of achieving it mm-hmm. because it was constantly there. It was in the front of your mind. Yeah. And, and I've, I've tried it. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> so I, earlier this year, I got... I, Brandon Bouchard, I don't know if you know him, but he's like a motivational speaker, but I love the guy. I listen to his podcast. He has a thing called the high performance planner and it breaks down your day pretty much into like 12 or 13 hours, but starts at 6 a.m. ends at 7 30 p.m. Mm-hmm. And you just write down in segments of 30 minutes. I like to do 30 minutes and I like to know what I'm doing every 30 minutes of my day. Sure. And it's, that's a little extreme. And sometimes I schedule free time or coloring break. I like to color just to give my mind a break. Nice. Nice. Just to relax, de-stress, yeah, whatever. Because again, you're thinking all the time. True. So I, I have little coloring breaks throughout my day and it sounds stupid, but that's that it, sounds awesome. what helps me. Yeah. yeah. It's a Dungeons and Dragons coloring book for like Hell $10 yeah. on Amazon. I know. Love I it. love it. It's so cool. I love Hell yeah, I'm in. Yeah. Um, so I do that and I know where between six and seven 30, I know every minute of my day, what I'm working on. But also beyond that, it has like these questions throughout your day and the beginning and at the end of your day, how can I, who can I lead today? Who can I make feel important? What absolutely has to get done today? What is important? What isn't important? Just all these random questions that you fill out every single morning Mm -hmm. and every single night, like what could I have done better? Who could I have made feel better? Like, how can I be better tomorrow? Just random stuff. Sure. So you fill it out and then you work on it. And it's useless if you just fill it out and don't apply it. Mm-hmm. But once you actually start applying it and filling it out and like, okay, I do want to reach out to this person. I do want to make them feel like a million bucks. How can I do that? And it really does make a difference on your life and yeah. your relationships, friendships, whatever. Like if these people are feeling like a million bucks, you're going to feel like a million bucks. I don't know. I just like making people feel good. I totally agree with that. I, a, a long time ago, I said that the, the official like mandate of this show is make everybody feel like a somebody. Hmm. I was like, just, I like yeah, that. it's something about that. It, it's a weird thing. Like I, I try to go out of my way to build up the people around me because it's like as a creative, right? All you need is one person to say like, oh, this was really good. I enjoyed it. And you ride that high for weeks. Yeah. You know? Yes. It's so weird how that works. Absolutely. Cause like, I don't know about you, but I feel like a lot of people by and large who make stuff generally don't get a whole lot of feedback. Mm. You'll get like a like every now and then or something like that. But you know, that's not the same as somebody like saying, Hey, this was really good. Yeah. You know? So it's, 
I don't know. I sometimes I'll just go out of my way to comment on people's stuff. Be like, this is incredible. Keep doing that. And I'm like, they're going to keep going because just this tiny little push. That's all it takes. Yeah. You know? I'm, Cause you're being vulnerable. Yeah. To everybody, millions of people. There's no limit to this podcast. There's no limit to YouTube. If, yeah. if it's out there, it's out there. So True. like it is True. very scary. And then you have all the haters being like, dude, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> why, why is that shot so long? Which I haven't had any of that yet. It's like 30. Trash day. <laughs> Trash day sucks. <laughs> um, Throw it in the trash. <laughs> yeah, no, but it, yeah, you, you have to have thick skin. Yeah. But at the same time, you just got to love what you're doing and yep. encouraging others because they're being vulnerable as well. Yeah. A lot of people are very, I don't want to say self centered, but they're only concerned about what they feel. Mm-hmm. And they Absolutely. don't, they automatically assume other people aren't dealing with this. Yeah. And then in reality, like, I'm scared. You're scared. We all have fears, whether it's one thing or another. We're all scared of something. Yeah. So if you can understand that everybody's going through something, everybody feels a certain way Mm -hmm. and encourage them through that, I think it'll make a very big difference in their life, how they carry themselves, how they produce their work. Like you talking to like stunt doubles and stuff on your podcast. Yeah. When, yeah. And like stunt doubles, bro, they're awesome. Like, the movies wouldn't be as exciting as they are without stunt doubles. 100%. But at the same time, they're pretending to be somebody else. So a lot of times they don't get that recognition. So it's like, oh, yeah, wow, yeah. Chris Evans really took that hit as Captain America. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, it's stunt double did. Exactly. Sam Hargrave. I follow that guy on Instagram and he's legit. He's fantastic. Yeah. So like you, it's very easy to be hidden. And like, again, like me behind the camera, I'm never, this is my first time on a podcast. I've never oh, done it before. What? Yeah. Again, really? Like, yeah. Yeah. I've never done this. I'm the guy recording and editing Dude. podcasts. But wow. Just, you got to fail. You got to yeah. face your fears. <laughs> maybe I'm good. Maybe I'm bad. Who knows? That's right. But That's it right. Just, you got to put yourself out there. You got to try a little bit of, of everything. If you don't like it, don't do it again. If you like it, keep on pursuing it. But you got to try it. No matter I what it so. is, you got to try it. I think so. And then when you find your tribe, you know, something, yeah. something magic happens. Mm-hmm. Cause like you, I don't know if you feel the same way, but like you've been doing it for seven years, right? I've been doing this for six years, but something happened on empty. You're like, Oh, right. This is, this is the Avengers coming together. You know, when we get together, look at these things that we make. And it's, mm-hmm. it's really cool to see, uh, like, I don't even know the right way to say it, but like people who love something and get to their positions that they really enjoy and then come together for the betterment of an idea. Mm-hmm. It's like, it can't help, but be at least decent. You yeah. Know? And when everybody, sad. and when everybody has their own strength that they're focusing on too. So like you, you're a phenomenal actor. You don't give yourself Stop enough it. credit. I don't. Like you started like shedding all these tears. Like, Holy <laughs> crap. I'm dealing with guys from LA. And I know you live in, Na- in Naples now, but it's like, crap yeah. like this guy's a good actor he made me oh, just so sad and like, <laughs> i can feel what the character's feeling like you're phenomenal like stop it you're you're a great great actor but i'm all right, I'm all right. Uh, oh so on the vein of everybody has their own strength when we were doing blisters the western i was just assuming that i was gonna have to do it all i was gonna have to set up the lights i was gonna have to monitor audio sure do the cameras and i brought all the stuff i brought my lights brought my audio shotgun mics and all that stuff and i get there and i see this whole crew of people yeah. and i see a guy setting up airy lights or something i see another guy with the boom pole I'm like oh crap like this is legit i'm just the camera guy yeah. <laughs> okay and then the lighting guy uh bobby yep he's like hey man where do you want me to put this light i'm like crap he's asking me yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh uh, yeah. Put it over there. We're going to do this and blah, blah, blah. And then you just like, uh, just you figure it out on the spot. But when everybody has their own strengths that they play to, you can get some really, really solid work. Yeah. Now, I, th- I think so. That that's a reason I'm really excited about blisters because it's, you know, it's a super close passion project of mine. Um, that, you know, it's just, I'm too close to it for sure, but it was, it took a lot to reshoot it because we'd done it before. And like I said before, I felt like I wasted everyone's time beforehand. Uh, Cause the crew was literally me slim and a few of our friends. 
and all of our friends had never been on set before. So like you just hold the boom pole and then you say action and that's what we'll do. But when we did it again, that whole crew was the tethered crew, which was the first mm. movie I ever worked on. So like Chris directed tethered Bobby and Dimitri, uh, produced it. And then Bobby ran sound for tethered. Yeah. So then I Bobby, Robert, that's what other people were calling him. Yeah, that's his name, but <laughs> okay, not to me, it isn't. Um, and so Bobby went to Atlanta and he's been working in Atlanta ever since. So mm -hmm. he's like, he worked on like Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and stuff like that, doing lighting and rigging and stuff. And then mm. we did a reunion uh, for Tethered over Zoom earlier this year. And they were always asking me like, how's blisters coming? Where's it go? Like, I saw that picture. When's blisters happening? I was like, yeah. you know what, guys? It's not happening. All right. It sucks. It's happening. Everything went wrong. Blah, blah, blah. So if you want to see it, would you get, do you guys want to reshoot it? And everyone was like, yes, we do. Let's figure this out. And just knocked it out. Nice. Nuts. And that, that shoot, the one I was on with blisters, it had some complications. Yeah. So, so, yeah. <laughs> and again, I'm really excited about making a Western. I don't know what it's about. I got the script. I edited the test footage together so I could kind of have an idea of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to do differently. Sure. Um, I made my own little storyboard and stuff. Love it. But then, so like, that's how excited I was about this project. <laughs> um, and we get a text. The horse died. We're going to yeah. have to like find another one. And this is day of maybe or the day before. Day before. And I'm like, and I'm like crap. <laughs> I want to make, I want to make this Western. <laughs> what do you mean the horse died? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we find a place and then I'm like, all right, sick. It's still happening. We're driving. It's a thunderstorm. Rain is pouring so heavily on my way yeah. there. I'm like, we're going to get rained out. It's going to get canceled. <laughs> this sucks. I want to make this Western. We get there. The rain starts to slow down. It's still sprinkling, yep. but it's not, it's not pouring like it was. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was sobbing on my way there, too. That's, that's a whole other <laughs> ordeal. But I get there, and um, it just starts to slow down. We're like, okay, I think we're, this is happening. Mm -hmm. Let's set up. So we set up a little tent just in case. And then we did get rained on, but it wasn't yep. bad. And I had a little umbrella on top of my camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it happened. And it was so much fun. And I'm so happy we were able to make that happen. Same, but, same. Yeah. I, I was excited about it. It, it. I feel like that's like really cool, like a real look into filmmaking. You know, mm -hmm. everything going wrong, rough conditions. Like I'm sitting in a fire, you know, yeah. it's like heavy stuff. The rain helped because, you know, I got wet, so it just looked like I was sweaty. So that worked out. I was laying in horse pee at one point. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, gotta this commit. Is, this is what we do. Commit. This is what we it's do. Ho hopefully it looks good. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I smelled so bad on my way back home. I was like, mm, yeah, I was, I was sitting in it. <laughs> so pretty much for everybody that wasn't there, we're recording a wide shot, and all of a sudden the horse faces the camera, like its, it's butt faces the camera, <laughs> and it just started power pissing like not to be <laughs> vulgar or anything but it was like it wasn't just like a it was like, poof, and like oh crap this is happening like we're gonna have to take this shot again and yep. i just start laughing yeah in the middle of it and you're still saying your lines and you're keeping it together I'm like dude i don't know how he's doing this i'm i'm laughing right now and he just saying his lines again that's how good of an actor you are no all right um so i'm i'm cracking up and then later on i'm getting a different shot from like across the fire it's a close-up of your face and it's a low angle. So I'm just like lying prone on the ground and it's kind of wet. And I'm like, mm, I, I really hope it's rain. But then I start thinking this is right where the horse was. And then, and then I start to sniff and I'm like, mm, yeah, this is right where the horse was. Yep. Yep. But it was worth it. You got you to gotta commit to it. That's right. That's right. The shot's going to look really cool. Mm -hmm. And there's a Slim got a picture of the horse peeing. Yeah. So it's a yeah. win-win. We have yeah. a video of it too. That's right. We'll have proof. <laughs> we can make that the thumbnail of this podcast. That's right. That's right. I have it. It's there. Be like, hey, everyone, here's a really good short film. Also, check out this picture. <laughs> Bloopers. <laughs> Bloopers. That was good. It was good. And then, yeah, we've been working on this new one. That's mm -hmm. really weird. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know if we can talk about it yet. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And what we will say is a lot of it is we have the story kind of mostly written. Yep. A lot of it is made up on the spot. Yeah. 
And for somebody like me, who this is my third short film, excluding Baby Nader, it's the perfect <laughs> storm. Chris is like, hey, man, so I want to make this thing. I don't really know what it's about. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> so, like, I can't storyboard or anything. Yep. No. Nah. Yep. So we get there and we just start shooting. And like, well, I think the character would do this. And then you start doing, you know, your character, his performance. Mm-hmm. And over time, it just slowly becoming this random, weird thing, which I don't even want to give the genre away. Yeah. But it's slowly being pieced together into something. And I don't think that would be able to happen if we didn't have all the different strengths and coming into play together. I think so. That's a great example of not being afraid to fail because we're very much like, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Yeah, it's like, will it be crap? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I hope yeah. not. Yeah. First day I was so stressed out. I was like, Chris, I need something. You can't just be like, well, you know, there's no script. I was like, no, that's not going to work for me. <laughs> we need, I need to at least know where I'm going. <laughs> and I remember I brought Zach in too. He was, he's another guy that wants to get into video production. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm like, Hey man, I'm working on the short film. Do you want to come? And he's like, yeah, it sounds awesome. I'm like, okay, but here's the thing. <laughs> We don't know what we're making. Right. Like, oh, don't use okay, this as cool. the yeah. metric. <laughs> yeah. It's like, don't like, don't judge us too hard. Don't set this as a standard because we're yeah. setting it pretty low. We don't know what we're doing. It's mm-hmm. not usually like this. And he's like, yeah. okay. And dude, he killed it. He was like setting up audio. He was running yeah. audio for a while. It's awesome. So Yeah. He did a really good job. I love it. I can't believe Empty was your first short film outside of Baby Nader. Yeah. That's, cr- that's crazy to me. Especially remembering on set when you're just like knocking it out, getting cool shots and having ideas. Like that tracking shot, walking into the gas station is a fucking cool shot. Thanks, man. And that's the exact same reason why I haven't seen it until you guys showed it to me like a month ago. And I was like, dude, <laughs> that thing. Because I brought my stabilizer. I brought my monitors. I brought all that stuff. And I get there and Chris is like, yeah, man, I want to shoot this handheld. And I'm like, okay. So like on the Ronin? No, handheld. And I'm like, oh. Uh, oh like with my hands <laughs> this is this is gonna be a bad first impression my dude. <laughs> like, and i didn't tell him that i'm just like rocking it like okay yeah i got this i got this yeah and, and i'm doing it and i'm like crap it's really out of focus and i'm like i have this tiny little screen to look at yeah just yeah doing my absolute best because you still wanted to have like a depth of field and like be a little out of focus in the background and look nice and have proper lighting and stuff mm-hmm it was the perfect storm for failure, man. It was, I was terrified. And that, that one tracking shot is the exact same reason why I refused to watch it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, they never talked to me again. That's right. I blew it. Yeah. And then, you know, you did. one brought me on for the Western. Yeah. The big one. Yeah. yeah. Not bad. Not bad. So then what is something, like what is a piece of advice that you would give to someone who wants to get into video production? Don't let the gear that you have stop you. I recorded Baby Nader on like some weird cassette tape crappy camera that my dad had. Oh, sweet. But you got to make it happen. So don't let the gear be an excuse for you not to try. You can shoot stuff on your phone these days. Um, don't be scared to fail. Your first project is always going to suck no matter what it is. Mm-hmm. And find like-minded people. Find a buddy that also wants to act find somebody in the theater department that wants to like get their work out there and like do makeup stuff, costume design, whatever, but just find a group of people that are passionate about filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Just start making stuff. Maybe you're not a good writer, at least try, but if, but if it just absolutely sucks, like trash day, (laughs) find somebody that wants to become a writer or that that's a hobby or readers. They usually are pretty good at writing too, because they read so much. They know, they just kind of have this intuition of this is what should happen. This is what this character should be doing, or this would cause some tension between these two characters. Mm-hmm. So I just find somebody that reads a lot, have them write something. They're probably going to have a lot of fun doing it. Just put that thing together, make it happen. It's going to suck. So <laughs> just learn from your failures, learn from your mistakes. Know what you could have done better for the next one. Don't give up because it's going to suck. That's, uh, that's practical, real advice, and I appreciate that. You're like, you're, do it. It's going to suck. Just know that. I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be terrible, yeah. but yeah. still do it. Because it, like, it sucks. It, like, it's sad to see all these people be discouraged because what they do make, 
like, yeah, it was bad. Like that thing was out of focus, whatever. And then like, oh man, I'm not good at it. And sure. then they just give up and never try again. Again, it's the concept of if Jay-Z's first song sucked and he gave up, he's not going to be Jay-Z. That's a good point. That's um, a good point. But he just kept on going. It's like, okay, this didn't rhyme. Again, I don't know Jay-Z's story. It's just an example. <laughs> <laughs> but like, if he didn't pick apart his work and know what he could have done better mm-hmm. and tried again, he wouldn't be where he is today. That's true. I, so I think... I think I just saw a video of Ed Sheeran recently where he basically said that he's like, you know, I was not good when I first started, even in the scene that I started in, I wasn't even the best one, but I kept doing it. And now I'm Ed Sheeran. And I was like, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Just be okay with failing. It's going to happen. Be okay with it. Learn from it. Apply what you learned. Be better next time. Still probably going to suck. It's not going <laughs> to suck as much. You're going to sure. get better. And then do the same thing again. Pick that one apart. What could you do better? Try again until you get to where you are. Seven years later, maybe you'll own a business. Laying in oh. horse pee. <laughs> maybe you'll be laying in horse pee at like <laughs> two in the morning. That's, let's hope. That's right. That's what we want for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's the goal. That's right. That's right. I love it. I love it. Well, dude, we've been talking for over an hour. We wow. did it. Time flies. We did it. You've been on my podcast now, Christian. So exciting. Hey, hey. Thanks for having me, man. This was a lot of fun. Of course. Of course. I mean, it was bound to happen eventually. You can't get away. You can't get away. Come on, man. There is no escape from Brian. No, there's not. It's a disease. Uh, but before I let you go, uh, mm-hmm. where can people find you online to watch your stuff? Uh, where's Trash Day? Um, <laughs> tra- tra- <laughs> trash Day, if you really want to watch it, is going to be on YouTube, <laughs> Positive Media. Uh, you can find my work on positivemedia.com. Um, Love it. You can find me on Instagram, Positive Media. It's really easy to remember. Just Positive Media everywhere if it's there. There you there. go. There yeah, you go. Piles of media. media. You got yeah. that good SEO. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. Again, I'm not a web developer. I just make videos. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stuff that I talk about. Like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. I just want to make videos. There you go. But, there you go. Yeah. Hey, that's half the battle. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Eventually, I'll hire people to do stuff. But. Yeah, of course. That's the goal, right? Put it exactly. off on other people. That's what I do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, man. This is a lot of fun. Of course. Anytime. Anytime. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. I've also got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Bernice, Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.